Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Friday out there. Hope we had a wonderful week and uh, now we're working our way into the weekend. So hopefully you got some exciting plans out there. Uh, me personally, I will be sitting here doing a whole bunch of homework. Uh, so, you know, maybe not the most exciting thing in the world, but unfortunately it is necessary uh, to get to where we need to go. So, um, you know, that's a little bit about my weekend. Let me know what you're going to do this weekend in the comments. So definitely be excited to read that and hopefully uh, it's something better than what I have planned uh, myself. So, uh, again, a lot going on out there right now. We have some stuff in the tropics. In fact, some uh, likely very big stories in the tropics, potentially the biggest of the year. Uh, all of that, you know, in the tropics also uh, going to combine with a cold front working on through the country to bring uh, some really nice air for some people and a whole lot of rain for others. So I'll definitely let you know who's going to see what out there, but definitely going to see a real mixed bag over the next week or so, depending on where you live. Uh, now, I do want to apologize for um, not having a video out yesterday, and also it might seem a bit tired in today's video. I did just wrap up my first week of classes here of sophomore year, so uh, I am pretty drained. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm drowning a little bit, so uh, definitely some well wishes and some words of encouragement would be nice, um, but it'll be okay. I think I just need to sleep tonight, uh, sleep in a very long into Saturday, and uh, just have a nice quick little mental refresh uh, because, again, it has been you know, a very strange 10 days. My life is very different right now than it was 10 days ago. So, uh, again, just trying to work my way on through that, but we'll get there. And, uh, you know, making these videos always helps uh, bring a bit of sense of normalcy to me. So that is definitely some good news. Uh, with all that said, though, um, I think that's really all. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We're getting very close to 1500 now, and the goal was to get there before September. We're only about 20 away right now. So uh, if you have subscribed in the past uh, couple of uh, weeks, definitely thank you for that. Again, means the world. And of course, if you like the video, definitely hit that like button and share this video if you have any family or friends down in the Gulf Coast uh, that may be impacted by what is likely to be a tropical storm, maybe even hurricane. So uh, with that said, uh, no more suspense here. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I will start with satellite imagery here, and um, again, a lot going on out there. So uh, we do have this kind of cold front sagging on through the northern tier of the country, that firing off some rain, but the stronger storms are actually further to the south of there, uh, specifically over areas of Kentucky and really just the Ohio River Valley in general this evening, seeing some pretty strong storms and um, even some uh, stronger storms as well. Uh, down towards the Gulf Coast. So again, very hot, muggy air in the circled area and then kind of drier, nicer air uh, to the north of that front. So definitely watching those two air masses collide. Uh, as for the tropics, this is Tropical Storm Franklin. We've been talking about him for a while. Uh, he has now crossed kind of uh, Hispaniola and is working again kind of up through the Atlantic. Luckily, he's going to stay offshore of the United States, although could bring some uh, high tides and uh, definitely some rip currents to the East Coast. So definitely watching out for that. But the real big story that I'm sure you're here for is what is going on down here in this pesky little area between the Yucatan and Cuba. So now uh, this is very likely to become a tropical storm and potentially even a hurricane. Honestly, I think a hurricane uh, by the time we get into early next week and it could bring uh, major impacts for our friends down here from uh, really anywhere from New Orleans down to um, Southwest Florida is in play uh, for impacts right now from this and even areas further inland kind of into the Southeastern United States. So again, a lot of people gonna need to watch this guy as he begins to form. Alrighty, so unfortunately my radar isn't working today. I don't know what its problem is. I guess it's just having a day. So we're going to have to just look at the NAM model right now. Luckily, it's initializing pretty well. So uh, this is a pretty similar picture to what we are seeing out there. Again, pretty um, scattered but strong storms along the Ohio River Valley from Kentucky uh, all the way down to Arkansas and back towards uh, the DMV area. If you know, uh, you know kind of thing whenever I say the DMV. Uh, but even also kind of spreading up into the I-95 corridor of Boston through Jersey, uh, Manhattan, and plenty of other places up there getting in on some of that rain. Now, as we go through the next couple of days, this cold front's very slowly, and I do mean very slowly, going to kind of dig southward and bring that rain with it. So uh, as we get into tomorrow morning, again, expecting some rain kind of down here from Maine through the Cape uh, and potentially again even into places like Jersey uh, and, uh, you know, some of those other surrounding areas could see some rain tomorrow morning. And all of that could stretch even inland into, once again, areas of Kentucky as this front very slowly moves on down to the south and east. Now, as for tomorrow afternoon, again, expect more storms to fire along that front, this time a little bit further south. So I think places like Nashville, Little Rock, um, you know, Memphis, uh, other places kind of in that general belt have the chance of some strong storms tomorrow afternoon. So again, watching out for those. Uh, and by the time we get into our Sunday afternoon, those storms make a trek across the Appalachian chain and uh, our friends here in Charlotte who are hopefully watching uh, and all the way down the 85 corridor back home towards um, upstate South Carolina into Western North Carolina and even down into the Atlanta metro could get in on some of that action. So 
again, uh, stormy day Sunday. So um, generally storms are moving, but just very slowly. So kind of hang in there. And then unfortunately, by the time we hit Sunday into Monday, or maybe fortunately, depending on your kind of weather, uh, this front's kind of going to stall across the southeastern United States here. Uh, and that is going to set up shop for whatever's in the Gulf to eventually ride up along that front. And we're going to get some big time rain and likely severe weather threat for somebody in the southeast. Just need to iron out those details. All right, so again, one nice thing about this is the dew points. You'll notice, look at these dew points come crashing down as this front moves southward. Uh, so going starting tomorrow afternoon, it's going to feel pretty comfortable for places like Chicago, uh, up into Minneapolis, Wisconsin, um, Minnesota, Iowa. Much better air compared to what we've had this week. Uh, much drier, and then that dry air kind of digs uh, further south Sunday afternoon along the Ohio River Valley, kind of cooling down a little bit back towards the northeast, upstate New York. I'd love to be there on Sunday because uh, it's going to be nice. Uh, dew points only in the upper 50s and maybe lower 60s uh, and uh, probably a pretty nice little breeze out of the north as well. Now for our friends here in the southeast again don't get too excited yet because I think those dew points uh, hold around and that muggy air holds around at least until whatever tropical system in the gulf sweeps on through so uh, definitely need to go ahead and watch out for that. All right, so let's zoom this picture out a little bit, take a look at the lower 48 and a little bit more of the extended range. Again, over the next couple of days, uh, this front is very slowly going to work its way south and eastward. And uh, while that's ongoing, we're going to get this system in the Gulf to begin to develop. So um, starting Sunday through early next week, again, this front is going to stall here across kind of the Appalachian chain, really. And uh, it's going to allow a lot of Gulf moisture, including whatever system is down here, to kind of come up and crash into that and really we're going to have quite a squeeze play and a lot of rain expected for somebody in the southeastern United States and maybe even some windy conditions as this moves on inland. Uh, again, really landfall right now is looking kind of like a Wednesday event um, for wherever this does make landfall in Florida, but we'll talk more about that system specifically um, here later on in the video. Now, after that is whenever we could potentially have a more widespread cold front sweep on through and more people get in on that nicer air, but that won't be for about another week to 10 days uh, for our friends here in the Southeast. So again, um, not the greatest news, but it is what it is. So take a look at temperatures again behind this cold front and whoever kind of gets some rain out of it. We are going to see some cooler air this weekend. So Sunday afternoon, again, it's pretty easy to spot this front here. Nicer, uh, drier air to the north of that, but unfortunately still muggy and hot to the south. So definitely needing to watch that before. Again, I think later next week, we could get a kind of a bigger surge of Canadian air to come down specifically on the eastern side of the country. And that could really help to cool things out and dry things out. We could have a really nice weekend to start off some college football maybe. So uh, I know uh, my good friend Mitch West, if you know Mitch, he's definitely rooting for that and we'll see. Uh, he's been talking about that for about, uh, well, let me see, six months now. So uh, hopefully Mitch has that come his way and, uh, you know, definitely be hoping for that. So take a look at these dew points again in the long run. Again, a bit of relief right now before that front stalls, uh, but it's after that tropical system moves on through that potentially, uh, if I don't take a sounding here, that is, we could get more widespread cooler air to try to funnel in down the eastern half of the country. So I'm definitely hoping for that. I'm sure many of you are hoping for that as well, but uh, we're going to have a lot of heat, humidity, and rain to get through before then. All right, so let's go ahead and switch kind of topics to the tropics now. Again, a lot going on out here, but we're really just going to discuss uh, Franklin here and this high area of interest uh, that, again, is likely going to impact Florida. So all of this out here is really just a bunch of jargon right now that is, you know, either going to go out to sea or just so far from impacting anybody. I really just don't want to waste precious time on it. So, again, we will save that for another day. Now let's start with Franklin here just because he has the lowest threat and luckily for just about all of humanity here, he's going to really kind of uh, squeeze the gap here between the Carolina coast and Bermuda and just kind of uh, move on out into no man's land. Now again, our friends up in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland will have to watch this for them, uh, but again, impacts for them would still be uh, likely about a week out or so. So definitely going to watch that. All right, so again, um, tracks here for Franklin. Again, uh, going to shoot that gap. Good news. And um, maybe getting up kind of here into sections of extreme eastern Canada. But uh, overall, impacts look to be relatively light, at least directly. Again, we will have some waves, some wind uh, in Bermuda. But uh, really more of a rip current kind of effect out of this guy more than anything. All right, so that kind of allows us to shift our focus now to what is going on out here towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, uh, this was the best satellite imagery I could find. It's kind of, you know not perfectly centered over it, but uh, you know, we'll uh, use what we have. So uh, in general, as you can tell here, we've got kind of a general motion of winds out here 
uh, that are you know generally circulating so we're definitely having some broad rotation now we have yet to close off a center uh, on this thing and that's why one it's not named and two we still have a lot of question marks uh, the models are still going to be a little wishy-washy a little all over the place until we have a defined center and then it will be much easier to track this guy and also once we get more weather observations uh, with that you know cold front currently over the United States and what that plans on doing uh, those are really the big key pieces in what is going to happen here to likely a future hurricane so uh, again Again, overall, though, pretty healthy looking. We've got uh, definitely some pretty cold tops uh, here on satellite uh, indicated by these very warm colors on your map. Uh, that pretty much just tells me these storms are getting tall and they're getting their act together. Uh, so again, as they begin to form around that center, uh, intensification is likely because the Gulf of Mexico is like a bath right now. Uh, very above average temperatures out there. So uh, that's why our guidance uh, here uh, is indicating a very likely strengthening path here for this invest. Uh, and honestly, uh, we've seen so many times, and I don't want to you know, sound the alarm here, but there's so many times we see with these systems in the Gulf that the models start off with this general idea, and then we really overperform it and get up here so uh, right now the floor for this thing I would really say is a tropical storm I would be very surprised if this does not produce tropical storm conditions uh, and the ceiling unfortunately very well could be quite a strong hurricane up towards category two maybe stronger but right now I think really the likeliest scenario is going to be this category one range so uh, again you really want to prepare if you're out here in Florida uh, but anyone from New Orleans here in Louisiana all the way back towards Tampa has a chance at landfall and just uh, due to the way that the um, atmosphere is out here over the Gulf of Mexico, this thing may be tilted a little bit to one side. So I think the entire west coast of Florida really needs to keep their eye out for impacts from Key West uh, up through Fort Myers, uh, my hometown technically, uh, back up towards Tampa and even into the Big Bend here and into the panhandle of Florida. Now, again, though, anywhere from New Orleans to Tampa, and even further south of there, uh, make sure you have a hurricane plan. As we all know way too well, anything could happen here in the Gulf. All right, so looking at our Euro ensembles here, again, a pretty confident track here, likely into Florida and then into Georgia and South Carolina. So uh, our friends even inland need to watch out for this. Again, obviously coastal impacts will be the biggest deal with this guy, uh, but if you're inland in a place like Savannah, Charleston, uh, Florence, South Carolina, up towards Wilmington, North Carolina, really keep your eye on this. And even areas further inland, we're going to have quite a squeeze play again with this front and whatever moisture is getting thrown off of the Atlantic. And, um, you know, the Carolinas are so prone to this. This. Whenever you get all that moisture off the Atlantic, kind of riding up that Carolina slope, that already causes uplifting in itself. And then whenever you hit another air mass, even more uplifting. So I'm very concerned about a flooding threat here along the I-85 corridor uh, and even areas further south of there. So again, really, uh, flooding could be quite a danger and quite a killer with this storm. So again, can't really underestimate. You got to stay posted with this guy. Got to have a way to get watches and warnings. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the individual models, our GFS and our European model, kind of uh, two old reliables, although sometimes not so much. Um, uh, but we'll go ahead and show these two guys. So originally, the Euro was really the one on board with this one, saying, hey, this is a problem, and it looks like the Euro is going to win that battle. Uh, but the GFS has come full circle now and uh, now has uh, the strongest solution out there. So I'm going to show this to you. Uh, because I think it's a good kind of top and bottom line for what we could see here. So GFS model latest run brings uh, what is likely a pretty strong hurricane, likely a category two with this kind of pressure uh, into uh, the big, or well, not the big bend, but the uh, Florida panhandle going into early morning hours of Wednesday. Again, in this scenario, we would have a pretty bad storm surge into the big bend, a very gusty winds, destructive wind, even with this kind of a pressure. Uh, and a whole lot of flooding, and that likely would move inland into Alabama, Georgia, and into the Carolinas. So um, in this scenario, again, we'd have to worry about flooding all through uh, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, as well as likely a tornado threat here uh, into the Carolinas, which I would love to storm chase. Uh, however, uh, school is probably going to get into the way of that, unfortunately, but you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll be able to get out there and um, do some chasing. We'll definitely have to wait and see. Uh, but again, this is the GFS model. Um, one solution, very possible, but not verbatim. And uh, don't take it to the grave here. Our European model, a bit of a weaker storm. Uh, it kind of brings this a little bit further west as well into uh, kind of the big bend up into kind of the Ocala area as likely a, about a category one hurricane here, maybe a strong tropical storm. And then brings it inland over places like Savannah and Charleston and keeps it about the same strength as it doesn't really uh, stay over land very long. And also something we're going to have to watch with this is how this interacts with that front. Sometimes these fronts, they kind of pick these things up and those uh, pieces of energy combine and they actually 
deep in overland. So uh, this could be one of the storms that doesn't lose much strength as it moves inland. Uh, but again, another solution here with the European model. So um, at the very least right now, here's what I know and here's what I can tell you. We're going to have some flooding problems in the southeast United States next week, uh, specifically from western Carolinas through Georgia uh, and um, into really the entire Carolinas as a whole and into Florida, wherever this thing likely comes ashore. That's what I can guarantee you. The question marks right now, how strong will it be? Where will we see storm surge impacts? Uh, where exactly will we have severe weather threat? Uh, again, a lot of things to iron out here, but it's Friday right now and Wednesday looks to be landfall. So we've got about, uh, if my math serves me correct here, about five days or so to figure this one out. So again, definitely make sure you're staying posted. Uh, come back for tomorrow's video and should we get a bit closer and this looks to be a real threat, I'll uh, kind of try my best to pump out two videos a day and really tackle this thing for you and keep you up to date. So again, just keep Florida in your prayers right now. Uh, and really everyone in the United States, keep them in your prayers and uh, you know, any, you know, anything else you want to keep in your prayers, of course, uh, do so as that is always a very important thing to do in life. Um, so again, that's all I've got for you today. I really do appreciate y'all staying in there with me, hanging on. Uh, it's been a crazy week. So again, I'm sorry if I might not have been completely myself, just kind of trying to figure out life a little bit here. Uh, with that said though, again, thank you so much uh, and uh, have a great rest of your Friday night and I will see you all tomorrow.